Hello, everybody, and it's good to be back here in Studio B recording Digital to Dice. I am Dave. I'm Ron. Didn't we do this a few days ago? We did, but it just feels good to be back here doing the show again. I don't know why it wow. just feels good today. It just feels good. I don't know what it is. What? what is, I, I, are you sure that's Powerade in your glass? I don't know what it is here. Zero sugar. That's what I do know, though. That's that's <laughs> what it is. There we go. But anyway, hey, before we get going, I do want to let everybody know that it, it's the hot season here in the Northeast. It's the hot and muggy season. So you might hear some fans and some ACs in the background here. Not much we can do about that as we have our professional studio set up in our basements and our bedrooms as we record this show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's... If if you if you have a really nice set of headphones or if you're listening to something like that, you might hear some noise in the background. That yes, that's our fans and our ACs. It's just not much we can do it on hot days. Um, I mean, Ron's in his underwear right now and nothing else, and he's still roasting in that room. So I mean, you know, he's he's got the AC on high. So they, they call me the rotisserie man for a good reason. Are those the uh, is, is that pickle Rick underwear that you're wearing? I can't tell. Yes, it is. It, it's very I, nice. I, I, I found it on Twitch. <laughs> And um, for a hundred dollars, she'll write your name for on, for on the whiteboard. Uh, she she wrote my name on the whiteboard that you don't see on camera. It's so worth it, though. It's so worth it, isn't it? And um, <laughs> and I got the I, I'm a dilly of a pickle T-shirt, oh, which will yeah. be sent to you instead of me in care in care, in care of your wife. It's it's kind of a running joke that we got going on with that. Is that uh, Ron, Ron does his games on Twitch, you know, three, four, five times a week live, and then it comes over. YouTube after but what what ends up happening is um when I go to watch them on Twitch you know I fire it up and they give you the recommended channels and there's always these uh it's called the hot tub category where there's just girls sitting in little pools in their bedroom looking at the camera and Ron will have nine people watching and these girls will have nine thousand people watching them just sitting in a hot tub waving to the camera and if you send them a hundred bucks they'll write your name on the whiteboard that they have so that's kind of the running joke that we got right now. So yes. we're, we're doing something completely wrong here. I don't know. Do we need to set up a hot tub here in our studios and no, do the shows? I mean, don't I, know. I, what's going to get us more views? How do we go from nine to nine thousand? That's what uh, I want to know. I mean, by, by the time that I hit the fifth grade, I was such a bad singer in the fifth grade. Was it was it yeah. your second or third year of fifth grade? We're talking about <sighs> my fifth year of fifth grade, Gardner. <laughs> that, that's back. That's back when I finally reached your class, right? Yeah. And. Uh, I, I was such a bad singer that they just finally made me the narrator of the Christmas concert. I, no joke, we did a play in fifth grade, and we all pulled, um, it was about the Salem Witch Trial, actually, here in Massachusetts. And everyone was drawing characters out of a hat, and I drew the narrator. And I didn't want to do it. I said, no, I, ain't doing, I don't want to do narrator. I want to be a character. I don't want to do narrator. So I, I get you on that. The narrator is... Yeah, I mean, I mean to sing so bad that you're just not going to do it. <laughs> the funny, another funny story here. All right, hang on. Yep. All right, we got to go back. All right. Line number three, Monty. Back in that fifth grade, I was talking about there. Yeah. Um, th there used to be um, a, a class called chorus, and people yes. would go down and sing at the chorus. And this was completely optional, but like ninety percent of the kids did it because they didn't want to, you know, sit in the class. I didn't want to do it. I don't. I'd never like singing in front of people, and I didn't like the songs that they sang. And so I would sit in the class, and the teacher would be steamed because the teacher had to sit in the class with me. The teacher couldn't go off to the cafe and do what, do whatever they wanted to do. They had to sit with the room. There's me, 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 and one other kid that just didn't do the chorus. And then you know, four or five years later, I'm I'm, I'm singing in a heavy metal band. No, I'm about to say, aren't you? Weren't you in a rock band <laughs> like, growing up? Imagine how much that would have helped my singing if I practiced when I was in fifth and sixth grade. But me, no, nope, I'm not singing that stuff. I'm going to sit here and do my homework. You know. Ah, the, the lessons that we learn too late uh, in life, it really is. But anyway. Made, fifth fifth grade music class, they made us sing Scarborough Fair. I don't know what Parsley, we were singing. Sage, Rosemary, and Time. I, do, I still do remember some of the songs, like Waltzing Matilda and things like that, that we had to sing back in the day. I still remember Waltzing Matilda. Now, know? I would almost pay to see Pickle Rick Girls sing Waltzing Matilda. Oh, that's, well, let's, let's, uh, let's chip in 50 each. Let's give her 100 bucks. have her sing Waltzing Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so this is episode 138 of the Digital Today's podcast. Yes. Uh, ways to get a hold of us, digitaltodice.com. It's a brand new website that um, I just learned how to pin... Post at the top of the page. I'm still oh, learning. Nice. I'm still learning how to use that. We're using Wix as the new website, so I'm still learning how to use that. 
Um, but I do want when, we, when a show goes up, I do want to pin it to the top of the page because you know I, I, I've been posting some other things like gaming um, games that I'm playing and some reviews I might be doing and things like that. But I definitely want the the, the podcast pinned to the top, and I finally learned how to do that. So it's it's um, it's a learning learning in progress here. Uh, the text line nine seven eight seven five one dice nine seven eight seven five one three four two three. I'm having some good text back and forth with people with some of the things that they're doing. A lot of the hockey projects. So we've been having some nice text back and forth. Digital to dice at yahoo.com is the email. And uh, facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice if you want to join us on Facebook. Uh, over 1,100 on Facebook. Yes, that's growing. Yes, that's still growing. I remember when we hit 200, we were so excited at 200. That's such a big deal, wasn't remember it? Remember that? It was like, holy cow, yeah. we get 200 people in our Facebook group, but we were so excited about that. And now we have, uh, was about near 1,100. So. Pretty incredible how this is growing. Uh, you know, I keep looking at the show numbers. My my buddy, you know, even our buddy Ray down who does the yeah, tra- buddy Ray, yeah. yeah, around the layout podcast. If you're into model trains, go check out around the layout. It's a new podcast our buddy Ray does, and uh, he's got episode I don't know seven or eight now. He just started out. He's going every two weeks, and he's doing a lot of guests on his show. And he was all excited about you know he had. 90 people listen to a show That's great. and i was like i go right you know we were when episode eight or nine with us we we were thrilled with 90 people listening to us yeah. you just got to grow it and take some time and and people are still discovering our podcast you know we'll still get emails or text messages like wow but i just found start it start back with episode one nearly three years ago yeah we still like when we go back and look at our statistics once in a while we see like holy cow people when there's a lot of people listening to episode four and five you know so they're going back and listening to everything so it is kind of fun and uh you know it was actually ron's idea to make the episodes pretty much timeless not episode every episode's timeless you, but you can't do it all the time but yeah, yeah but for the most part you can go back and listen to pretty much any of our shows and uh it, it, it's still relevant today as it was the day we did it although uh you know there's only so many topics you can cover so we revisit a lot of topics sometimes we get we delve a little bit deeper into topics and sometimes as we mature as gamers we might even change our opinions over time about things Mm -hmm. we talked about in the past i know i have certainly oh sure so um you know i i think if you follow along we, we 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 grow as uh podcasters and grow as gamers as everybody else does and um it reminds me of this uh, the, the YouTube video I saw the other day about uh, a lot of the uh, popular heavier bands, how as they got older, they started writing a lot lighter songs, you know, and it's it, oh, cool. and, and one of them was about Metallica and the guy and the guy was talking about, I can't picture Metallica in their late 30s writing about seeking and destroying like they did in their early 20s, you know, so it's just you're in a different mindset. You're not quite as rebellious. Maybe you got kids, you're settling down. So everything softens up a little bit as you get older. Do you do you remember back in the early nineties a character on Saturday Night Live called Middle Age Man? No, no. It was Mike Myers. Okay. And uh you know, Chris Farley was his best friend. And so they're both dressed up kind of at our age in our hairlines. And younger people would come and ask for advice and Mike would give it because I'm middle a middle aged man. I know escrow. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. My my younger self would not want to meet my older self and hear what I have no, to say. No. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, hey, t- so today we're going to be talking about storyline stuff. Yeah. We've, been, we've been kind of beating around the bush a little bit with that here on the show, and even some of the um the the live streams and the chats that we've done talking about how storyline has really become a part of uh, our gaming in the whole bit. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, but should we get to uh, what we're playing first? Sure. Well, I guess I'll kick things off this week. Uh, playing a little bit more Spiders Baseball. Woo-hoo! Oh, my gosh. That that eighteen ninety nine season is really kind of like snuggled up on, and curled up on my lap. It really has. I, I'm going to get you some of those Peanuts books, and you can just kind of commiserate. You and, you and Charlie yeah. Brown can commiserate with all that, right? Yeah, it, it was. Um, so I'm playing more Spiders. You know, I, I, I almost broke out the 75 Reds because I'm playing the 75 Reds. I'm trying to play every game of that in Strat PC Baseball. And every time I fire up Strat PC Baseball, I just go right to 1899. I look at the Spider schedule, and I, and I, I usually skip ahead a few days. I don't want to play every game, but I'll, I'll skip ahead until I see a good matchup. And uh, I'm really, really falling in love with a lot of these other teams and other players. I really am. Yeah. In fact, I played Louisville last night. Spiders went up 4 nothing against Louisville and then proceeded to lose 
eight to four or something like that. Typical spider's loss. But it's it's so fun and happy go lucky. I, I, I don't take it all that serious. It's it's more just a, a, a chance to, you know, play play a game, have some fun. If I go live, we have a chat room and people root for the spiders knowing they have no chance. It's just a good time. If there's such a thing as a good time playing where I don't care who wins or loses, it's just fun playing these games, learning the other players. Uh, we had um, my, my favorite new player is Dummy Hoy. I think mm-hmm. we talked about Dummy Hoy and we talked to um you know, uh, uh, John Thomas Hetrick about the, the the players there. The guy that wrote the Spiders book. We talked to him a lot about the players. I'm I'm really falling in love with guys like Dummy Hoy, who plays for Louisville, and uh, they had a third baseman named Honus Wagner that played for Louisville, who, <laughs> who I'm now very familiar with. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, I make a joke about he's playing so well. He went like three for four last night, and said he might be in the Hall of Fame someday if he keeps playing like this. You know, so I'm starting to to, to recognize because there's what is it, twelve teams or something? It wasn't a lot of teams. So I'm twelve starting, team league, yeah, yeah. So I'm recognizing different teams and different players. So I'm really enjoying 1899. I need to break out the uh, the homebrew 1899 app of cards that I have and play that again because that was fun having the cards in front of you. It's one thing to play oh, on strat, is. but when you have those cards and you can read those. Those names right in front of that is so cool. So I need to break that out again with my uh, my baseball stadium that I got from uh, Mike Force here, which I really really love that baseball stadium rolling dice in. Mm-hmm. So I need to do that. So I played some more Spiders baseball. Uh, let me see. I slipped in a game of Apple hockey. I played sixty six sixty seven uh, Canadians at the Blackhawks. That was fun because I had. Uh, Gump Rosley and Net from Montreal, and Glenn Hall and Net for Chicago, and I think in sixty six, sixty seven, neither were wearing masks. So, so last of the original six years, last of the original six years. So there I was playing that game, and uh, I don't think either one of. So I'm playing the game, you know, trying to keep in mind that neither goalie has a mask. A lot of lot of Bruins, future Bruins in that game. Esposito and Hodge were on the Blackhawks. Fred Stanfield was on the Blackhawks. Ed Van Imp, who I think briefly played with Boston, then went to the Flyers. Was in that game, and uh, Carol Vadney, I think it was, was on the Canadians. I didn't know Carol Vadney was on the Canadians before he played for the Bruins. And in the, in the, Bernie Perrant was on the Canadians at that point too. Was he Canadians or was he Bruins? Canadians, I believe. Philly I think, took him in the expansion draft. No, Bruins had Perrant. Oh, did Bruins have Perrant? And then yeah, he, he got let go to, to, in the expansion draft. I think it was yeah. But Bru- Bruins, he might have been with Canadians, but he definitely was with Boston at some point. So that was fun playing sixty six, sixty seven. That's a little bit out of my wheelhouse, so to speak. That's a mm-hmm. little before me. You know, I'm the seventies, eighties guy, so that's a little bit before. But that was fun getting a game app, and I did that specifically to try to compare that to Hockey Bones, which I've been playing a ton. Yes, you have of Hockey Bones, and and we've had conversations. I mean, I've been driving to work, and we've been talking. And I'm like, I'm trying to compare these two games because they are like neck and neck. Hockey Bones and Apple right now for long play hockey games. I'm not talking a, a quick play or a shorter play, but for long play hockey games, Apple Hockey and Hockey Bones are like neck and neck. And and I keep going back and forth between the two because I'm trying to see if I can get a winner. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, let's go to this restaurant. Oh, that's great. Now tomorrow night, let's go to this restaurant and compare which one. Which one's the best? I don't know. I need to go back to restaurant A again. Mm, okay, this is, well, let's go back to restaurant B. And that's what I'm doing. And I actually did a live chat the other night about uh, can you love more than one game? Because I can't decide between the two. They, I think it's kind of like spaghetti. You can have different kinds of sauces. Yeah, that's what you it know, is. I mean, Sarah, my wife will put in Sarah. You know, sometimes she'll do a hamburger, and sometimes we'll, we'll do sweet Italian or hot Italian sausage. And, mm. hey, you get a can of clams and do a clam sauce, and it's just as good. Right. It, it, so, Yeah, yeah it, and uh, the thing is I'm not trying to pick one, and I don't have to pick one. You know, you don't have to ha- pick one game and you know, whatever because I'm going to be playing them both. But I'm, tr- I'm just – I, I, and I don't know if anybody else has gone through this, that you, you have a game that you play and you really like and love and you made it your own, and then all of a sudden a new game comes along, and you're like, holy cow, this is really fun too. And yeah, I, I would say for me that would be, um, well, I haven't played a lot of it recently, other one, but Roster Card and Strat Baseball, because Roster Card is a game that I've kind of, you know, will mod on the fly to what makes sense, and so I don't have to do the chart lookups and that. And it, it's a game that plays really well. The footprint for it is very small. It's a team sheet for crying out loud. Just trying to, you know, to do a pure card and dice. And of course, the old standby for me is Strat, mm. which 
and action PC. So there's three baseball games there that I, I've spent a fair amount of time with, and they, they all have their strengths, they all have their weaknesses, and they all get the job done. Yeah. And, you know, and, and again, it may be, okay, um, you, you know, maybe not the different kinds of spaghetti sauce, but, you know, spaghetti, lasagna, and, uh, you know, maybe different kind yeah. of noodles. You know, I, like I, I, yeah, I, I guess the big difference is, and you keep mentioning this to me, is that is how much time I put into APA. You, know, you threw a ton of time. I mean, you took a game that Mark Zarb, our friend, did a lot to rescue, so to speak, and others have kind of taken that mantle. Mark, Mark by the way, speaking of what we're playing, just finished the 1991 NFL season which in real life was the year that the Redskins beat the Bills in Minneapolis. So you that Thurman Thomas forgot his helmet on the bench and missed the first play from scrimmage. <laughs> and that was kind of the highlight for Buffalo of that game. Um, he, he, he's reconfigured a lot of, of APA football stuff, and the Redskins literally ran the table. They went 19-0. and Oh, wow. 16-0 um, the regular season. Obviously, they didn't have to play a wild card game. So, division championship, I believe they beat New Orleans or Philly in the conference championship, and they beat Houston in the in the Super Bowl, who would be um, another good story in itself. And it's just, yeah, and so so that's what Mark just finished that project. Yeah. Um, so you took a game that was redone essentially, mm-hmm. that he had made it and made it workable. And you had gone through and, and you added your touches because you'd like to do that. And as you've said before, you'll back off those changes once you get used to the game. But you made Apple your own. You simplified it. I mean, you didn't rewrite the re- the rule book or anything like that. But you turned that into something that really worked for you. Mm. And so you've taken that extra time to do that and to go back to the hockey bones you haven't told me you've modded that at all. No, you were literally the, the, playing that right right out of the box. You, you ever seen the, the show on TV called Love It or List It? Is that one of those house flipping shows? Uh, it's a house show, yeah. And, and so you, you, they have these people on, and they're they're not happy with their house, and so they don't know if they – so they bring in two people, and, and the woman renovates the house. And the man on the show tries to find him a new house. So, so when they they come back to their house, are they going to love it and stay there, or are they going to find a better house or and list their house? So it's love it or list it is the name of the show. And we watch that once in a while, and it's so you got the woman trying to fix up the house to make it look good for him, and you got the the man who's the real estate agent trying to find him a better house, and the couples you know has to decide what they're going to do at the end of the show. That's kind of how it is with with apple hockey and hockey bones. Mm-hmm. Is 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 I've modified and fixed up APA. And again, the core of the game I haven't changed, but but using, you know, the Mike Berger stuff to simplify penalties and ODAI and then another assist shot and then a few other things that I've thrown in on my own. I've I've just polished the edges of APA and I fixed up APA. Basically, it was fine on its own, but I fixed it up so it just it runs the engine's purring. You literally took the good recipe for the basic ready for recipe for spaghetti, maybe the four cheese classical sauce and you dumped a bottle of Tabasco in it to give it the to yep. give it the spice. So, it, it, yeah. it, so APA is the fixer upper and Hockey Bones is is the the new house. You know, when yeah. someone says, "Here's the house, you don't got to fix up anything, it's ready to go." And th- that's kind of the difference here is that I spent the time getting APA just, again, just the way I like it. Right. And Hockey Bones is one of these things I didn't have to do a damn thing. Like, nothing. I've done nothing to Hockey Bones. I just play it right out of the gate. Uh, aside from me. And, and we haven't even talked about any changes you might make either. I mean, that's the no, thing. No, the only thing are. I've done is is late in the game, which I do with a lot of other games, is, is I, I have a, a role for penalties. When I get down to the last five minutes of the game or so, it's like, okay, if there's a penalty... I roll the dice, and, and I, it's a smaller percentage of a penalty chance. And then as you get down to the final two minutes, it gets real small. So it's it's not impossible to get a penalty, but a penalty is not a penalty at that point. You still got to roll for it. And, um, right. and so I do that with APRA, and I do that now with hockey bones. But, it's, but I do that with every hockey game pretty much for the most part. So aside from that, I haven't touched the bones. So that, so I keep going back between the two. I'm playing the 92-93 Boston Bruins season. I'm going to try to play every game. I mean, actually, game... Eight or nine right now, if you can believe it. Did you just finish your West Coast trip? I did, yeah, and I'll talk about that when we talk about storylines on the show. But um, 
yeah, it, it's really great because I'll I'll set up a game and I'll play a period and then I'll because it takes me a while to play a period. So I'll, I'll play a period and then I'll walk away and I'll do something. I'll do some work. I'll cut the grass or walk the dog or, you know, spend time with a wife at dinner or whatever. And then, you know, go back and I'll play another period and then, you know, do something else. And then, and then I'll play the third period. And rest. So I play it. I don't do it in one sitting. But I've been getting in a couple of games every three days, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then there's no hurry. There's no rush to do this. But I'm enjoying it. And I when my new season comes in, I imagine I'll take a break and I'll and I'll play some games from there, and from the new seasons or whatever. But, um yeah, I've been been enjoying um, the Hockey Bones quite a bit. And it's, it's a different game than Appa. It's... Um, and I can't put my finger on why it's different. It just is. It has a different feel to it. It plays almost the same, but does, it does a few things differently. I think it's a little easier than Appa myself. Mm-hmm. Once you get going, maybe maybe because I didn't. You don't get to spend any time with it. Once you learn the symbols, you learn the symbols. Um, but I've been going back and forth between Appa and, and Hockey Bones again. I'm like, what, you know, I want to do a compare and contrast, and, and it's just they're so close. They're they're. Really one and one eight. So, but so I guess, but that's a good thing. Imagine that you have two games that you really, really, really like, and um, you know, and then I can't forget about in the crease too. I really like in the crease. That there's there's a lot of things that in the crease hockey does that I like. There's a lot of things that strat hockey does mm-hmm. that I like. And in fact, I, I said to myself at some point, I will take a break from bones and app, or, and I will pull out my strat cards and I will play some strat on the table because I haven't done that in quite some time. Most of my strat hockey is done on the PC. But I do want to get back out and give that another fair fair shake on the table there as well. So uh, I think that's mostly what I've been playing. I did roll uh, the Stanley Cup Final Four shootout hockey has the new season out. So if you're a fan of shootout hockey, 21-22 was just released. And so I took the final four teams and rolled them out, which was uh, Edmonton, Colorado, and New York, Tampa Bay. And Edmonton breezed through in shootout hockey breeze through i think it was four one and four two and they won the cup yeah so yeah edmonton did not have a problem winning the cup in my replay like but in real life <laughs> having some problems <laughs> yeah, colorado says not so fast my friend yeah yeah it is colorado is uh really really did their thing so i did that so if you're looking for shootout hockey they have the new season out and i hear they're real close to releasing at least one more 70s season in shootout hockey, maybe two. So keep Ooh. an eye on that. Yep. So what have you been playing? Let's see. The 85 replay has reached August in baseball. I uh, did a doubleheader yesterday. Um, the Reds swept the Dodgers at Riverfront. Real, real weird scheduling thing. I talked about it on the show. Um, it was a husband and wife from somewhere in Rhode Island that did the hand schedule from 77 and I think did it for 20 some odd years. Really? And so, yeah, no computers. They may have used a computer when they got in the nineties or whatever, but you know, it was all done by hand. You got to, here's request dates, such as the Red Sox being home for the marathon and, and, and all, you know, the, what the Yankees want and all that. So it's not just plug and play, but, in the National League between 77 and or 69 and 92, because there was only 12 teams in the NL, you played 18 games in your division per team and 12 against the other. And at this point, of course, the Dodgers and the Reds are in the same division. But going into this, um, they'd only played three times. And so they had a doubleheader to start the 15 times they were going to play in the last 62 games of the season. I, I just found that to be a, a real big quirk. And, of course, the Reds swept the Dodgers to cut the gap to 13 games. I can't so, imagine trying to, by hand, put together a schedule for something I think that once big. you do it once, you just kind of know. Maybe. But, I mean, Pitt, Pitt is sitting there, and it's just like you got, you know, what are they, the 30 teams at that point? 26. 26 in, teams. In that era. And you're playing, what, 150 games for everybody? 162, and you gotta, you got to make your TV partners happy, which at that point was ABC and NBC, so you got so to get you're trying to schedule some you know, some games on night games. Saturday and, matchups yeah, and, and a few decent Monday night matchups. And, and you can't overlap. I mean, you can't have a team playing in L.A. You know, for four games and then be in Boston the next night. I mean, No, you're, you, you know, you, you got West Coast teams, and they got 
to do. I, you know, I, just, I can't. I, I've tried to put together a hockey schedule for like eight or ten teams, and it's like, man, I'm just like pulling all my hair. Like, what do I do? This and that. Now this doesn't work, and this out of line. Oh, this works. Now this doesn't work. It's just you move one piece of the puzzle, and the whole puzzle changes, and you got to start over again. I, I, yeah. But I guess once you've done it once or twice, you get in the flow. You have some kind of a set formula used. But, but wow, good for them. Good for them. Yeah, you got to know that you know Oakland. Seattle and California were going to be on the same pod for the trip to, to Baltimore, Boston, and New York. And so, you know, you're doing yeah. your nine games on the East Coast and you're doing three against Baltimore, three against New York, three against Boston. And that's yeah. pretty much, how, you know, at least takes care of that. What kind of stinks uh, is, is in my 92, 93 replay, I'm in game nine and I've already played in Los Angeles and now I'm playing Los Angeles at home. And then I'm done. We do a the one for the year. We do you, a one, you, you, and, and that kind of stinks because you know it's like Gretzky is not playing at this point. So I, yeah. I so we've played them twice, and there's been no Gretzky. And it, yeah, and and that was always the stinky thing. But I remember back in the day when you played a team one and one like that, it was like like you played all these cool teams, you know, like the Flames and the Kings, and you know, I mean, there's only so many times you can see the Sabers and the Nordiques and the Whalers. We played them like 35 times. It felt like, but the cool teams were all at the beginning of the season. And you're like, oh, okay, all the cool teams are done. Now we got 35 Saber games. It's like, oh my god, there you go, you know. <laughs> but anyway, hey. So, yeah, so that part was fun. Uh, so we did a, a full four-game week for that. Uh, what else have I done for the uh, sports? Oh, uh, did, did we do the Celtics loss at home? Did we do that on the show? I don't remember. I think you were talking about it, but go ahead. Okay, and so, you know, I'm doing the 85-86 Celtics and Strat, and we, they had beaten uh, Portland at home, which was their one loss that year at the Garden. For the rest of that year, they went fifty and one. If you count the playoffs and the in the NBA championship, that's just that's just ridiculous. I, I can't I can't imagine. So Dallas is there. I think oh yeah, because I think I played that game Saturday while you were at work, and um, they just could not put Dallas away. It's just one of those you knew that Dallas would find a way. Yeah, I did because uh, um, not Del Curry. Um, one of the, Dallas just 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 did everything right. Did everything right, and d- there wasn't anything that Boston did wrong. They just couldn't get enough points. And it's one of those things that you know. I mean, it worked for Dallas, and so the home loss was to Dallas. Now we'll see. Haven't played the Lakers yet. Haven't played the Rockets yet. Um, Philadelphia and Milwaukee are always tough, and uh, Dave's Dave's Hawks are just a genuine pain in the neck. Something about those Hawks. Oh, you know, it's one. Of, I mean, one of those things that it doesn't matter forever, 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 forever. The Atlanta Hawks will now be yours. <laughs> yeah. I do, well, when I do a Cardinal game on the replay, they, they're right. One of their right fielders is Andy Van Slyke, and I don't know. I can't remember what his real life nickname was, but this is kind of goes into the story line thing um i did a draft league in stratton college and i had him and he had a couple big home runs late in the regular season and so he got the nickname thumper because he thumped other teams and hmm. so when vance like comes up it's it's here's thumper uh-huh, nice. now the only reason why you know no one knows him is that it's just me you know and the and the five kids that w- were all in that league together yep and so that's that's that. Um, let's see. I was bored, and so I re-downloaded a fishing simulator, like one of those freemium games. Really? So, you know, it's free to play. It's like gems. And you can spend some money if you want to, to get some better stuff. And I've thought about it. And so, yeah, so I've, been, I've gone fishing. Hmm. And, yes, you can do that with just a mouse and with the right equipment. Even the bass won't fight you too much. And so me in the bedroom, you know, catching smallmouth bass and perch. and That must have been fun, though. It's great because it's something you can do that really requires no thought. It really is a thoughtless exercise. I can put on the music I want on my speaker or ball game or whatever and – just take it all in, and there's just an escape. Imagine a cards and dice fishing game. Doesn't down? No, Downey is a tractor pull. 
damn, he's attractive. Full man, a card to dice. Like, what would you do with that? Like, you'd, you'd roll for the cast. You'd roll for the cast, and if you rolled a two, your line would break, or a twelve. And then if you got a nibble, you start rolling dice to reel in the fish, and, and then you, you, right. roll, you roll to see how big the fish is. You turn it into risk. You get three die, and the fish gets two. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, so you're fighting the fish. That would be fun, a fishing cards and dice game. Uh, the fish get three armies because it somehow still holds Australia. Yeah. Um but anyway, I mean, I, I can put some money into it. I mean, there's some, some good freemium games out there. Gems, of course, being one sports-related world golf tour. I remember spending $20 on fake clubs a few years ago. Yeah, fake Getting clubs. a set of tailor-mades. And uh, doesn't help me any. You still can't hit the ball straight. But, you know, you at least, you know, have the sponsors' clubs and maybe <laughs> some real, real golf balls so you could drive it 300 yards. And they put you on a U.S. Open course. Please break 100. But so, so that's one of those that, yes, it's kind of sports. You know, I mean, when I was, did you ever, I mean, your grandfather or uncles or anyone ever watch Kurt Gowdy and the American Sportsman? Oh, I, I've, oh, man, I mean, I've heard of it, but no, no. It was one of those shows that if it was on, I changed the channel. <laughs> you know, I, you know I'll, I eat plenty of animals, you know, but we have it and we had the pet cat. I really have no desire to to watch people hunt for bear. I, I, I don't like that either. Or, or spear fishing or anything yeah. like that. But it's not that I care about whether it's a real fish or not, since I really can't fish anyway. It's just real relaxing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Put so on that's put on some. Pretty uh, much what I've been playing. Put on some yacht rock radio and. Exactly. In fact, I had it the other day because my Spotify really wasn't cooperating with my speaker, and so the. Uh, I want to. I want to meet the guy that does the voiceovers for that. Yeah, rock radio. That's right. We are a virtual cornucopia of everyone's third favorite song. I uh, I, I listen. I I listen to that a lot. In fact, I go between um like like the hardcore metal stations and then yacht rock radio. And it's it's so different. It's like rah, 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 and then it's just like uh submarines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go between you know, the two. Seals just died. Yes, yes, he did. Eighty years old. Yes, yes, he did. I saw that. It's too bad. I, yeah. I, I do. I like the Yacht yeah, Rock Radio. He did a country version of "Get Closer" with one of the female starlets from the nineties, and I, but I don't remember her name. And it came out really, really well. Really, you guys are getting your five dollars Patreon money out of this episode. Let me tell you, there's a um, and we'll get to our main topic here um, real quick. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy. I don't know if it's a guy or a band named Jorn, J-O-R-N, Jorn, and he's out of Europe. Drop, drop the uh, Bjork, right? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, his name, it's just it's Jorn is the name of the band. And I discovered them. I don't know if it was on iTunes or just surfing around. And they do. A, he does a lot of Ronnie James Dio cover stuff. That's kind of mm-hmm. how I found him. He does a cover version of Ride Like the Wind in a metal, in a heavy metal version. And it's okay. really good. It's not like complete, like metaled out, but it, it's a hard rock version of Ride Like That's, the Wind. What, what a Christopher Cross's hardest song. Oh, too, my so. gosh. In the ride, ride like the wind. And it's like, this is awesome. I crank that song all the time. So if you, if you, if you want to listen to a good cover, a good heavy metal cover of um, Ride Like the Wind, look up Jorn. He's really good. All right. After all that being said, should we get to the topic of the day? Yeah. All right, so let's talk storyline. Now, okay. this is something that y- you've been kind of banging this drum and preaching this probably since the day I met you. Well, I have a I have a YouTube channel that pretty much does nothing but storytelling. Yeah, so when you were playing that football game and the first time we kind of chatted mm-hmm. and you were saying that coach was kicking the water bucket and, and, and this guy's puking on the sidelines and I'm watching the screen and I'm like, I'm not seeing the coach kick the bucket, and I'm not seeing the guy puking in the corner over here. But this was all stuff that in your head, because the team was losing, the coach was getting frustrated, guys are getting tired because it's hard, and you added all that in. You were kind of laying out the storyline in that game, you know, in your own mind, and you were pro- right. projecting that off in the broadcast to the audience. And so since since the day I met you, 
you've had this big thing about storyline. Right. For the longest time when I started playing, you know, these games here, I, I was doing the quick play games just getting results. And I was getting my scores and my results and who won and the whole bit. And I didn't have a lot of storyline going on. And for me, I think my first first real experience with storyline probably was when I did the uh, the homebrew shootout hockey cards for the Summit Series, 72 Summit Series, and it was uh, Canada and Russia. And again, these are not official shootout cards, so I can't broadcast it or anything. But I was playing that, and that things were happening in that game that it, it, it brought out a storyline is the only way I can say it. And that's the first time I've really played a game and got involved. And it's like, wow, you know, Phil Esposito gets a major penalty and that's a big deal in hockey. And they kill it off and he comes out of the box and he scores the next goal. And in my mind, I could see, you know, the coach kicking the bucket like you were talking about. I could see Phil Esposito scoring the goal and looking at the referee and basically, you know, giving him the evil eye, saying, you put me in the box for five minutes and I come out and I scored a goal, you know, up yours type of thing. And I could see that series taking shape with, you know, things that, that happened in the game, major penalties, a lot of penalties, a lot of goals being scored, goalies getting pulled because, they're getting, you know, they can't make a save. And then going to Russia and, you know, getting destroyed in game one because of the jet lag. And then coming back and there's so many things happened in that in that series that I played that it just was full of storylines. And it's stuff that I, I had never experienced in a game. I mean, I played games and had some fun in the whole bit. But it was after that that I started to look at games a little bit differently. I, instead of just, hey, here's the final score and, you know, Jim Rice hits two home runs or Bobby Orr get two goals. I'm kind of looking at the game, and I'm looking at the ebb and flow of the game. What happened during the game? And if I play a game right after that, what happens in that game? What, how come, you know, Orr got two goals here, and then he went pointless? Was he tired? Was he hurt in the next game? And that stuff that just comes, it's like, wow, I'm creating a storyline playing these games. You know, and you don't have to. But it, it really adds to what's happening. It really does. I played a game last night. In Vancouver, 92-93, Bruins are up 5-1 to one over the Canucks. Last game of the road trip, they're up 5-1. to one. I'm like, wow, what a successful road trip. We're going to go 4-1 and one on the road trip. Vancouver comes back and scores five goals in a row, and they win 6-5. to five. And my storyline is the Bruins just ran out of gas in the third period from the long road trip. They just were exhausted. And at this point here, they're just looking forward to going home. And it and as mad, mad as I was that we gave up five goals and lost, there was a storyline there, and there's a there's a tale to be told in my own mind. You know, I think because we're of the television generation, that when you sit down to do, I mean, the football game, action PC, and you're trying to, I mean, when I do a game. I see the different camera angles developing. And so you're talking about whatever it was, uh, uh, you know, Shula upset because of this play or Ditka throwing the gum at McMahon because he threw an interception or whatever. And you just kind of add it in because that's what the directors would have found. That's, you know, so that's what you're seeing. It's very rarely ever just that and when you throw together a longer series of games diff- alternate storylines develop um and you kind of have to go with it it's not just cut and dried pull up pull the cards out of the rubber bands you know a lot of people talk about accuracy and yeah you want the game to be realistic in that but for uh, always for me it's about what are we going to, you know, what story are we going to tell? Because playing a replay for me is the same as writing or reading a novel. You don't know how it's going to go. Um, even when you get real, the real-life teams in the World Series, for instance, in my 49 replay, I mean, the Dodgers had to survive a playoff against the Cardinals. And so it was the Yankees and the Dodgers. And, yes, there was some real-life wackoness to it because the Dodgers won game one and the Yankees won the next four to win in Brooklyn in game five. But in my game five, 
because the computer d- does not like to throw pictures on three days rest. I had to go with a scrub to win the World Series, to, to clinch that series in Brooklyn. Fred Sanford, who he'd made fun of all year just because Sanford and Son and the Elizabeth, Kevin Oma, Elizabeth, you know, and so you got all those jokes there. And in this big pressure packed game of trying to win the World Series, he took a no hitter into the ninth inning. And so am I really going to get in a World Series clincher on no hitter from a guy? Because back then, there, you know, there were maybe some people who were bullpen specialists, but not a lot. If you were doing the pen, it's because you couldn't start. And so here he is. He's throwing a no hitter against a team full of Hall of Famers to clinch. And so, yes, that tells because you think you're going to get one story. And you end up getting, and the game tells you another. And some of it, of course, is being comfortable with the game. You were comfortable enough with shootout. I forget what I was streaming when you rolled that eighth game in Moscow. But you were, well, it, was, it was either a tie game after two or it was a one goal game after two. And the Soviets put six up on Canada in the third period. And I don't know if I was doing a playoff game or what. And so we're in the, you're, pumping it in the chat and I'm doing updates and I'm whatever I'm doing. I'm going, Oh my God, yeah. what the hell just happened? It was a Saturday. It was a night game. You were doing a Saturday night. If I remember on that one there yeah. and I was uh, playing, I was like, this is nuts. This is really. And, and that's, and that's a whole thing of storytelling. And when you do a replay of some, a long-term replay of some sort, whether it's you're parachuting in for a game of the week type thing or a single season. I, I mean, there's some great storylines in that 77 Red Sox one I haven't touched in a while. Like Bernie Carbo has 20 homers in the first half of the year. Yeah. yeah. And again, the, the nice thing about it is, I mean, yeah, you plan for the bigger things to happen, but the game, it's kind of like the Ouija board if you're not trying to press on it. The game just kind of says, well, here you go. Here you go. Mm. Follow this one up, big boy. Yeah, it, it was it, it, these things are just the alternate storylines is, is almost better than the main storyline sometimes because, you know, that Vancouver game I talked about where the Bruins led five to one, they lost six to five. Two out of the six Vancouver defensemen got hurt and had to leave the game because I'm playing with injuries now. Adding injuries into these games has really added to the storyline. And I did it had no I hated to play with injuries. I never did injuries until recently. Mm-hmm. And that that probably prompted the whole topic today's storyline because things are happening in these games. And, you know, we, we talked about I want to play this game to play with these guys. And if they get hurt, I don't want to play the game. I get it. But when I did the um, – yeah, but, but but let's explain. Oh, we explained that, I think, before. I mean, you had such a bad experience with your first injury. Yeah, yeah, I did that. We talked about that on the show, the uh, yeah. the, the video yeah. game that I played. So I've stayed away from that. And, uh, you know, when I first started playing these games, you know, if, if I'm playing a game and Bobby Orr gets hurt and he's out for the game of the season, I don't want to play that game. At least that's not – that I didn't want to at the time. Now, um, I played that – um, series as my dog is coughing over here. Sorry about that. that. Okay, he's okay now. Um, so I got. Um, I'm playing Chicago Montreal, and Tony Esposito gets hurt, and he has to leave for a period. And and I'm and I'm holding my breath as as uh, the the backup comes in, and I'm just for the life of me trying to remember who the backup was for Esposito. Was it Vi- was it no? It wasn't Visor? Was it? I forget who it was. Was it Bannerman at that point? Right. This was too early. For it's seventy seventy one. Whoever the backup was for Esposito. Okay. Uh, but anyway, he he come in, and um, and he 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 held the fort for the period. He stopped, you know, six or seven or eight Canadian saves until Esposito could get back in. So my storyline was Esposito took a shot to the face, got cut, had to go back and get get stitched up and fixed up, and this other guy came in and uh, and had to do, and had to you know finish the period for him. Well, you had that with Bernie Perron getting hurt when you were doing the Flyers Sabers final. Yeah, well, well, what I was getting to is um. And then later on in the series, I had uh, Ken Dryden get hurt early in Game Six, and he was done. He he was he was done for the game, and th- they brought in Vashon, who was not a bad goalie at the time, and they uh, th- they lit up Vashon for six or seven goals, and, and the the Blackhawks won the game, and they won the Stanley Cup in my replay, 
And that was an incredible storyline. And and I didn't want to play with injuries, okay? But I kept rolling injuries for Dryden, and I kept ignoring them. And then when I got one for Esposito, I said, okay, I, could, I should roll on this. And, I, and, okay, he's hurt. He's out. And so it was, um, oh, it was um, Disjardins, Gary Disjardins, by the way, was the backup for Esposito. So he came in, and he did an admirable job. So So I had to be fair. To be fair, I had to be fair, and when Dryden got hurt, I rolled on. He was out for the game, and they lit him up, and they won. They won the cup in Game Six on the backup goalie, and that was a a pretty cool storyline. Yeah, and then getting to the other storyline when I was playing the uh, the hockey bones, Bernie Perrant got hurt in Game One, and I took him out and put in Stevenson, and Wayne Stevenson did such a good job for the seventy four seventy five Flyers. I kept him in. And so that's that's part of the other storyline is is adding injuries into my game really gives it some some story because now you know you got to think about okay what do we do well, without our best goalie you know I hope the backup can can come in and get the job done you know can Vancouver losing two defensemen down 5 to 1 they came back and they won that game kudos to them and I was even adding a little bit of fatigue to the other two guys cuz they were just alternating it's, yeah, I mean, at that point, you're guaranteed to play half the. Half yeah, the so time. so I was I was I added a little bit of homebrew fatigue to them. I know there's a fatigue in the game, but uh, instead of like getting all stickler about it, it's okay. Let me just you know I'll just subtract one here, one there when they get the puck and, and try to you know pretend like they're they're injured or they're they're fatigued. Uh, but but I ended up keeping Stevenson in, and and then when I put Perrant back in, he got lit up for three goals on ten shots in the first period, and I and I and my storyline was Perrant is still not over whatever injury he got. And so he's not ready. So I took him on and put Stevenson back in. And that was the whole storyline of the 74-75 Stanley Cup replay that Buffalo won in six games. Six, yeah. Was Bernie Perrant got hurt, and he wasn't his normal self. And the backup came in and won him a couple games. But then he lost the game. I put Perrant in. He got lit up. And I took him out again. He wasn't ready to go. And it made for a very, very fun storyline. So injuries that I've been adding into my game have really added to storyline. The other thing that I do that, that I've done in the past is if I'm playing a particular team or a series, let's say usually a series like a Stanley Cup Finals or something like that, and one guy on a, on a bottom line starts playing really well, or if I'm playing a baseball game and a guy at the bottom of the lineup starts hitting, I move them up. So I might have a guy on the third line in hockey. I'm going to move him up to the second. Or a guy in the second, move him up to the first. So I reward mm-hmm. good behavior, even though that's not the line that they would normally play. And the same with baseball. If I got a guy that, that's hitting pretty good, if I got a guy for the Reds, for the Cincinnati Reds, let's say he's in 75, and this guy, whoever he was, player X, he's hitting seventh or eighth, and all of a sudden he's, he's picking up a couple of hits a game, I'm sliding him up to the five or six spot. And normally he wouldn't be hitting there, but in my storyline, it's like this guy is playing well. I'm going to take advantage of that and have him mm-hmm. have him hit more, you know, in a, in a higher slot. So I, I like to do that, and I'm doing that in my hockey replays, and I'm, I'm shuffling my lines constantly. You know, if someone has a good game, you move up, you get more ice time. You know, if you're, yeah, hit, you're no, hitting, you get exactly. more time. You know, even in some of the football games I play, you know, if, if I get a cold running back, or a cold wide receiver, and, and he's dropping balls, or this guy can't can't get out of the backfield. I'll, I'll go to somebody else, and I've had some really fun games where the, the second string guy, or or somebody you wouldn't expect to to be the hero of the game, is the hero of the game. Al Red Sox fan and kickers. Yes. Yep. You know that that that's that's a good example of that. Um, you know, I mean, people people are going to know me for a couple different ways. One, a banner that fell on me, and a walk off safety. Mm-hmm. Kansas City, Denver, week fourteen or fifteen of the seventy eight season, and Kansas City has pretty much Charles Emerson Winchester as a quarterback. <laughs> and, the, know, thir- the, the third, a, the third, the third, the third, the <laughs> third chief of head of thoracic surgery at Mass General. Uh, <laughs> Good because he can't throw a football to save his life, but you know if he, if you need to have something removed, he's your man. Um, and so and just knowing that that game was going to go in overtime, and Denver was going to win just because Kansas City couldn't throw, 
And so looking through my plays and, okay, he's got a .6 chance on a pitch from my four or whatever the heck it was to score. Because you can't, you're not going to throw a Hail Mary from your four. So you're saying there's a chance. Yes, Jim Carrey, I'm saying there's a chance. And you know, he got tackled by Tom Jackson or Carl Mecklenburg or, you know, the Broncos cheerleaders or, or Robin Williams. And <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, it's a safety. It's a walk-off safety. And Denver wins the game at the gun because they tackled some poor schlub in the end zone. I remember you were you were confused, like what happens? Like why is the game over? You know, because because actually BC football does that. The game ends and that's it, and it goes right. To the right. Sc- and it's like, what the heck just happened on this last play? You you don't have time to really figure it out. It just the game just ends. You don't, and, and I think that's the other thing because um, I, when you either are playing face to face, which is where the Andy Van Slyke story comes to to whether to if you're streaming and you're entertaining an audience as this stuff is going the mario mendoza game you know mendoza best known for not hitting and then walking one off of the pirates against the dodgers and one of my regulars at the time pretty much throwing a fit because his dodgers had lost to the 11th straight time to the pirates or whatever it was Dodgers got the last laugh and won that World Series. But, you know, I mean, those are the things. And I think, I mean, we all work on immersion. You are big into, and I do for street, for an action PC logos and ball fields and and football end zones and all that. Because you, when you, you want to feel, you don't want to feel like you've just pulled out cards and dice and playing them. I mean, for and hockey bones, you're playing on your digital dice mat with the old logos. Mm-hmm. So you are at the rink when you are playing that, whether it's a boring eight nothing game or whether the uh, the Flyers have taken over and there's nine line brawls. You know, so you you we all do that to a degree, dice towers and and stuff like that because you want to feel like you are part of the experience. And so the storytelling part is kind of taking that to the next level. It's not just putting the the paint on the field to make it look like that this generic chip is the Vikings end zone from 1974. But and again that's I'm not poo-pooing that at all, but to saying that you know it was, you know, Fred Cox again in Al's story who the inventor of the Nerf ball nerfed the extra point and the Rams beat the Vikings because Fred Cox, who was as steady of a straight ahead kicker that you could ever get, yeah. missed it. And, and that becomes a story. And with your group of buddies that you share this with, it, it just kind of grows into a, into legend. Yeah. I mean, again, I mean, could I tell you who won on my stream last Wednesday? No. But to go back to the Canadians and the Soviets in game eight, what happened in that period? Or or when you had the Guy Lafleur miss the goal on the one to 17 chance or when you get someone in strat, I know, you know, the one to 19 chance you're going to score and the D20 roll pops up at mm. 20. I mean, yes. Or with the auto racing game, trying to explain all that and then oh yeah not only does the old man win his fifth he does it on a photo finish at the wire because those are the things that because you think you're gonna when i did the golf majors that one year you go in again you're preparing for a telecast and you're trying to think of what to say about the two golfers that are leading and then you hit the start button and someone shoots a 67 and they're no longer you know i mean those are the things arnold palmer that year at the Masters, he hold his second on the 15th, the par five, to take the lead and then spun it in the water on 16. I mean, I mean, I mean the, the, first of all, those are the reasons why we play this stuff. Yeah. Just, be, just to have those moments, and we all have an individual collection of moments. And that's and that's the storytelling. And when you do a longer project, those stories carry over from yeah. one game to the next. Yep, I've had a couple of the uh, Boston Bruin wins in my replay, and hockey bones were from the defenseman, and one of them was a third line defenseman. And it's just and, and that happened in another game too, where you know you roll and it was a it was an interception, automatic shot, and you roll a a one on the blue die and and that's in range for a shot and it's like wow he's got a one five chance you know one and then you got to roll a five on a two two white die and I roll a one three or a one four 
that shot's on the net, and I check the goalie card, and it's a goal, and it's like, holy cow. The the third-line defenseman intercepted a pass and scored the game-winning goal, in effect. And that's that's a complete, like, Cinderella story type of thing. You're not expecting this guy to no, win you, you the you can, game. You, you can hear Fred yell, Lyndon Myers or Devin Marquardt. Yep. You know. And you know they get their five minutes in the pregame show the next yep. night. You know the next game, and but it's 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 fun yeah. playing these games now. And now that I'm actively looking for a storyline, they're there. And before I would just play, and it's just right. okay or well, whatever. But now now I play, and I, and I tend to take my time more. Like you know, with the app and the hockey bones, and all, again, I play a period, then I stop, and a period, and I stop. So I'm not trying to rush through it in in an hour or whatever. I'll, I'll take like I say, if if it takes a couple of days to play this game out, a period of time, you know, I'll I'll do that. Excuse me, but um. It, it just I, I start looking for the storylines now. I look at who's getting the assist and who's getting the penalties, and it's like, okay, this guy's out there. He's got two penalties, and he picks up a third penalty. Oh, yeah. And it's you like, know, okay, or... this guy's going on the fourth line. He, he's, he's just getting too many penalties. I can't have him on the second line anymore. He's just a liability now. Or if I'm killing a penalty, you're not killing a penalty because I don't need to be down by two men and things like that. So I, I actively look for storylines, even the, the Spiders games, for crying out loud, when I, you know, they these guys come up, and and sometimes I just bunt all over the spiders because I play against the spiders, and I just bunt everywhere, and it's it's hysterical because I guess the spiders couldn't really feel that well, and so I bunted last night, and and the the, the freaking catcher of the pitcher threw it away, and a run scores. It's just, it was just like you could just picture like little league baseball, kids throwing oh, it yeah. everywhere, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's fun. It really is. So now that I play these games and I've added injuries and I'm playing longer games, I find that the longer games really give you more chance for a storyline than say a quick play game. They do, but again, shootouts the one that gave you the Canada yeah. Soviet storyline. Yeah. That, but I wouldn't say that's a quick play game. I'm thinking like a, right. a you know, like a one a roll type store. game. Yeah, because and I and I've done that, and it's like okay, well this team got hot, then they got cold, and whatever. But when you when you play the game and shootouts, one of those games you feel like you've played an entire game because you can see who makes plays and who takes penalties and the whole bit, and goalies making great saves. Uh, so if you play a game like that or, or a longer game. You know, like I say, Apple baseball, strat baseball, whatever, you know, whatever kind of game you're playing there. Um, you know, th- those those games, I, I find the longer the game, the better the storyline. When I play History Maker Golf, which I haven't played in a long time, but I need to pull out and, and play that again. When I do a tournament, when I do a four to five hour tournament, the storylines in that, you see the golfers choke. You see the guys that are, you know, Pa birdie birdie pa they're hanging around. They're just they're sniffing around. They're they they're, they're not going anywhere, you know, and they're just waiting for one of the one or two of the top guys to to put that ball in the I water. Like what Justin Thomas did at the PGA a few weeks ago, you know, yeah. coming back from seven down yeah. on the final day. And who, 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 hung around, who hung around and hung around. Who was the guy that dropped ten shots on Sunday? He kept putting it in the water. Oh, poor Harold Varner the third. Yeah, he hit it in the wall. You know, he he. he Kept, this was this was in a Colonial in Fort Worth. Oh, I was watching. Yeah, he ended up. He kept missing. The, he he four putted because he just couldn't put it in the hole, and he, so he got like a seven or an eight, and then he hit the next tee shot under the water, and he and he triple bogey that, and he ended up losing ten strokes you know, when, on Sunday. He was he was in hit, the top four, and he lost ten strokes on Sunday. You know, when you you hit your thumb with a hammer in the garage, you hear about it. The wife hears about it. The dog's laughing as it runs away because you're 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 having a bad day. But in that case, and you're doing it in front of three million people on national television, yeah. I mean, just ugh. yeah, it's it's so frustrating. You could just see, and at the end, when I saw him tap in the last putt, and he kind of like went over his caddy, gave him a hug, and they they looked at each other just like. It, 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 it just what well, it just happens. No, it just, I mean, yeah, I mean that's why you know you rather have those days on a Thursday when you're on the uh, streaming plus package for that, and okay, you know your weekend's going to be free as opposed to Sunday when you have a chance to win. But it just yeah. When I play the 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 play history maker golf, when I do that that marathon there, and, and sometimes it's, it takes four or five hours for me to do that. At least when I did it, it took a long time. The, mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're done that, 
you're you're mentally exhausted. You you feel like you've just run a marathon because you've played this super long game, and you but you've you've seen it all. You know, you saw you 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 know you quickly get through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so you could see who who advances and who doesn't. So you've already developed a few storylines of, wow, Tiger didn't make the cut. That's incredible, or you know, whoever you know, Greg Norman didn't make the cut, or whatever, and 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 then you see, and then you you follow the guys that are like, you know, man, he's he's six behind. If he loses one more stroke, he goes into this pile, and he's kind of done, you know, because you only keep track of the top six. And so then when he goes into right. this pile, you kind of just roll to get a generic score, and you usually don't come back from that pile because you're not going shot by shot, you're not making decisions, you're just getting average scores and so they're usually done and so it's fun watching the guys that that right on the it's like oh no he 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 birdied or he pod he saved face he's still in contention you know and the storylines there of the people that just fall apart or the people that come up and take it over or get to the 17th hole and, and you double bogey and the guy was in the lead now he's a shot back the storylines in that game are, are, are ridiculous ridiculously fun they really are so i find the longer the game the more chance for storylines that can happen in uh and, and that's why we play these games it really oh, is absolutely it really is so any final thoughts on that before we wrap it up no and, and i think that you know if you struggle with trying to come up with them just you know the game talks to you mm-hmm. pay attention to what the game has to say and you know it's so not everyone's going to be a hero there are going to be some villains and you, your favorite players are going to underperform at times, and that's all part of the the tapestry of of, of doing the replay. It is, yeah. It, it's fun when you watch the best guys struggle at times, not all the time, but at times because oh, it's like you don't want it all the time. No, but it's just like, oh man, this guy can't make a play. He can't do do this. He can't do that. It's so frustrating and. Um. Yeah. So that that's a whole storyline in itself when when that happens. But anyway, yeah. So we want to know. You know what what are some of your storylines? What some things have happened in your game? I mean, do you have storylines? You just play the game and you're done with it, or do you do you really like to get involved with what happens? Do you like to watch this thing play out, and you know get mad at players that underperform or get excited at players that overperform, or you know maybe some guy comes out of nowhere and he's the he's the Mendoza of the day or the or the Van Slyke of the day for you. So you know we'd like to know. What, what, when you guys play, tell us about storylines when you guys play. All right, so we get to our three stars of the week. Woohoo! All righty. Number three star, it is Hey Brian Hey. Hey. Thank you so much, Brian, for being one of our, our Patreon sponsors here on Digital to Dice. Again, uh, patreon.com slash digital to dice if you like to help support the show. Our number two star is Dwayne Norris. Woohoo! Thank you, Dwayne, so much for being a Patreon supporter. And the number one star of the week here on episode 138, and again, these are in no particular order. Right. It is uh, number one star is Robert Mancini. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, boys and girls, for helping uh, keep us going here. As we got, what, is it next month? It's three years? It's three years in about a month, yeah, mid July. I was thinking that I thought it was two, but we're going to be completing three years. Yeah, we start our we start our fourth year in July. Yeah, because you figure we're getting in what forty nine to fifty shows a year. About that, yeah, we've missed. Yeah, if we're going to be there's four shows, so yeah, we'll be about eight short of about fifty a year. So, so yeah, yeah so we do about forty five, forty seven shows a year. Holy cow! Yeah, so that would be three full years. So we'll be starting yeah. year four. Wow. Yeah. Wowzers, huh? Who would have thought? <laughs> but anyway. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, but, but again, everybody, thank you for the support to help keep us going here as we uh, keep rolling digital to dice here on your headphones. All right, so should we wrap it up? Absolutely. Yeah, Living by the Numbers, episode 138 of the Digital Today's podcast. And today we talked about storyline. It's usually a happy storyline, but not always a happy storyline. It doesn't always have to be. <laughs> some, some, sometimes uh, the, the good guy doesn't win in the end. <laughs> uh, little Women is not all about having fun, okay? <laughs> hey, ways to get a hold of us. DigitalToDice.com is the website. Check out our brand-new website, by the way. Uh, 978-751-DICE is the text line. Email DigitalToDice at Yahoo.com. 
Facebook.com slash groups slash Digital to Dice if you'd like to join in the conversation over there. Ron, thanks for joining me today. As always. And uh, until next time, folks, keep on rolling them dice. Bye-bye.